the champs are like, ladies and gentlemen, LeBlanc gonna hit the bench first, and Team Solo Mid gonna answer back with Fulgren's Rumble, which I can tell you from experience is <laughs> terrifying. I can't tell you that well. Yeah, no surprise there with the Rumble. Uh, big ultimates coming from Thaldrin to get them here to the MSI. Yeah. got also removed away from Bjergsen. Again, these guys, a lot of time to be able to research their opponents. You can watch the playoffs. You can watch the last few games of the regular season as well. Understand what's common for these guys so far. Bjergsen taking off a lot of playmakers. One of the tried and true ways to try to push down Team Solmid a little bit. And it won't be those Dyrus bans. Yeah, so Dyrus should be able to pick up, you know, one of the more comfortable safe champions uh, that he can take in that top lane and sort of take more abuse without dying. Yeah, and the Urgot ban is interesting to me here as well. Aimed mostly at Bjergsen, you could imagine, but Bashikdash were sort of used to more playing that against an AD carry playing Urgot. Oh, yeah, I don't know if Wild Turtle has learned the champion. We have seen teams grow the champion pools, right? Yeah, Woody brought out Cassiopeia. Uh, we saw Urgot come out for the first time as well by Fnatic. So there's certainly growth available to all these teams. They've had a few weeks to grow those champion pools and bring out something surprising. Gragas removed away from Santorin, even though we haven't seen him play the champion yet today. Just Besiktas trying to get rid of what they think is scariest from TSM. Yeah, and Theokal is probably looking for that first pick Sejuani as well. He does love to play that champion, and he'll grab that whenever he can. We'll see whether it's going to work out, though, because they may need to have more early pressure. Well, TSM happy to play an objective control game themselves, though, and I feel like Nunu would easily be able to stay in this champion pool and picked up early by Santorin if he wants to. Ari removed away from energy, so another assassin ripped off the pool there. It's always strange to me seeing a team ban champions that they are comfortable playing themselves. Bjergsen's run a number of RA games throughout the North American playoffs, but apparently TSM doesn't want to run that champion themselves. I mean, we've seen so many teams target ban energy with this RA. Um, and he's kind of a point that teams, especially with middle players like Bjergsen, have been looking to attack. So you take away the RA from energy, one of his comfort picks, uh, and see if they can get something. You know, maybe they're going back to their tried and true strategy of. We're going to have Centaurin in the mid lane early on, get Bjergsen fed, maybe he's on Assassin or something, uh, and take over the game that way, because that's how they have had a lot of success in the past. Yeah, and this is the thing as well, as in the IWCI Grand Final, that was the massive contested mid lane pick, was that Ari pick. Tokas on the side of Ince as well was fantastic on that champion, so making sure that they get rid of that, because that was the contestant there in the mid lane. But it is going to be Dumbledoge on his Morgana, and this guy was doing work on that champion. Likely to see maybe a, a thresh there from uh, from Lesboy then. He's really, really trended back towards this champion. Um, but as the first pick is support, they don't have to take away early. And TSM get to have two power picks. Dyrus could easily take up uh, Maokai, which he's been a big fan of, yeah. or the Lulu as well. So I think one of those two will go to Dyrus. Santorin going to get his hands on that Sejuani very early, take it away from Theocles. Don't let Besiktas have any sort of, you know, big AOE crowd control to work with. And yeah, it's a big home crowd here for Team Solo oh, Mid. Yeah. We saw Besiktas win the International Wildcard Invitational off of a home crowd themselves over in Turkey. TSM now themselves enjoying that benefit. And they will pick the team fightest, team fightiest champions there. Sivir and Sejuani picked up. Five on five, going to be good for them. Yeah, TSM looking to simplify the game. Uh, just get it so they can have a very strong five versus five, get that dragon control, uh, win the early team fights, and not let this game get out of their hands. Yeah, Nadius very much loves to play the Sivir as well, so picking that away from him is a very good idea. We'll see whether he goes back to his Lucian. Thinking about Katarina and Zyra at the moment may not necessarily be coming through. Jungle Katarina, less likely. I feel like Theocles jungle not run Zyra, that. Jungle Zyra, though, that can work. You got plants fighting plants <laughs> in the jungle, stuff like that? Back when you had Lizard Elder, you could have oh, your yeah. plants. Are you guys okay? Leandri's torment <laughs> and Lizard Elder, it was a great choice. I'm from the oceanic region, man. Things uh, happen differently He's still upside there. down. <laughs> Max is actually casting with his hands on the ground. He's, you know, doing handstand on this I one. Give it away, man. Vladimir Please. does get picked up, though, and Ghost Flash for energy means he's actually probably going to be playing that Vlad himself. Yep. The Rek'Sai does come through here with the Sejuani grab the way, so Theocles, maybe that band's slightly hurting them, but uh, the Rek'Sai early aggression is still going to come out here. Ooh, oh, Bjergsen hovering over goodness. the assassin mid. Maybe they will go back to the tried and true. But Vladimir in the early game, if he can get through the early stages versus Zed, uh, then he'll be able to uh, try and be a sustained beast in the mid lane. Yeah, a, lot of a bit of a foothold. Well. They do have Rek'Sai, but and the problem is Vladimir is good against Zed anyway. Yeah. I can't see. I don't. I, I, I wouldn't if I was TSM pick the Zed here. Bjergsen might have his other ideas for this one. But in my mind, it's not a great pickup here for Bjergsen. Hovering for now, but whatever. 
Cyan for Dyrus, I think, is a very good choice. Another big frontline tank. I want to see if Bjergsen does want to play, as Jack keeps calling them, control mages, team fight mages. And it looks like they might even just leave the mid lane pick for last. And Thresh, I was going to say, Maokai is a much better idea. There's With the Thresh the on the hunt Maokai. as well. Man, so good. Yeah, those are the two picks we were looking for, for Lustboy and Dyrus. It's also uh, worth pointing out, we don't know where that Vlad, or sorry, TSM doesn't know where the Vlad is going. Energy's got the summoner spells here, and we can true. see that it's going to be mid. But Vlad, of course, would be a flex pick. Thaldrin, a big carry top laner, yeah. would play Vlad himself. So TSM making sure they get Bjergs in a good lane matchup. Yeah, and you may as well just save your, your mid lane pick till last as well. And Energy thinking about maybe going for a Lulu, potentially, unless Dumbledore is going to pick that one up. Because they could give it to Thaldrin in the top lane, but that's not necessarily one of his champions. Yeah, that would probably go back to energy. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, how many champions could be swapped around. Yeah, I know. It's Morgana, really, Morgana well, can stay so. in the top lane. Oh my goodness. But really, they're just trying to protect themselves uh, since, you know, Bergson does have the counter pick option here. And right, what is the safest go. pick? You could say Lulu, probably the safer option here in the mid lane. I mean, his Lulu wasn't bad. He did, you know, he was part of first blooding Faker. He got yeah. one v one the guy afterwards. Lulu Almost. does get picked up in here. And with energy swapping to Ignite, I think that is actually going to be the mid lane Lulu. The Lucian AD carry coming in as well. So uh, definitely a lot of late game team fight power coming out as Vladimir will scale up. And you expect that Thaldrin should have an easy time farming. The difficulty, though, Vladimir not the best gank assister, so the whole camp and kill Dyrus thing much less likely. Plus, the team fight from TSM right now is so much more reliable than the team fight oh, yeah. uh, from Besiktas. Even though they do have some AOE, uh, so much more crowd control here from TSM. Hard crowd control, easy to hit. And all they need is another strong damage source. Well, Azir would probably get there. If you're talking about consistent damage, you're not going to get much better than that, apart from the likes of a Cassiopeia, you'd have to say. We'll see what he does decide to go with. And Ziggs would be interesting. Ziggs and Karthus are two of the other big ones that I like as Whoa, big team fight happened. mages. Ziggs is the champion. TSM boatloads of wave clear and ridiculously good team fighting. TSM all about the 5v5 top to bottom. So much AoE damage coming through as well, not to mention Dyrus protecting his whole team. Uh, yeah, I, I really do like this comp from TSM just because it's so simple and so safe. They have yeah. tons of wave clear. They can just hold on, wait for those team fights, force them at the dragon. They have all kinds of AoE. Dyrus on the most reliable teleporter there is. Yep. Maokai can easily come in, point and click. There's your fight. Meanwhile, you know, Bajikjus, of course, they're going to hope to rely on Thaldrin as they have all throughout IWCI. Vladimir could always become a huge tear. He'd be pretty hard to kill by this comp as well. TSM really not burst enough to, like, remove Vlad at the start of the fight. Uh, all the point and click CC they do have could be Sanguine pooled as well. So. That is a player I really want to look for to see if that can carry Besiktas through these team fights. And the thing is, yeah, even if, you know, Vladimir does get strong, and even if they do go for maybe a split pushing strategy with that Vlad, Ziggs is so good at uh, denying yeah. split push, being able to cover two lanes at once. Yeah, the Mega Inferno Bomb just fantastic. If you don't necessarily have that strong wave control, you just throw your Ziggs sort of halfway between lanes and just clear everything from forever away. It's yeah. really frustrating. And that's going to be really hard. Besiktas, of course, a, a bit of a newer team in TSM, of course. Been yeah. around forever. The shot calling generally not going to be as strong for the teams coming out from developing regions. So if you can get an out rotation, like, all right, we got the top tour. And then Ziggzult comes through. Just all the wind comes right back out your sails. Definitely going to be an uphill battle, I think, for the international wildcard team of Besiktas. But there's always a chance they can do it. Team solo mid in front of a home crowd. Hoping to pull back from a loss earlier in the day. Yeah, Besiktas also are unafraid to go completely ham against these top-tier <laughs> teams as well, and it's beautiful to see. All right, well, let's see if uh, Theocles can make some early moves on the Rek'Sai. Well, let's see if most of the team can make some early moves on any lane that they <laughs> decide to choose. I don't know about Vladimir. He's got a rough time making early moves. <laughs> oh, like, well, we'll see. He might just flash pull someone. Who knows? And Aldrin yeah. might have an interesting idea here. Well, they're moving in a stack here. They've left the Ocalys behind, but they're looking to try and get something down. But a nice ward from Wild Turtle going to stop any funny business from the Turkish lineup. Yeah, I think that is sort of the, the name of the game here this time around in 14 solo mid. They don't want anything to go uh, stray. They don't want any surprises in their game. Just pick a bunch of wave clear, team fighting. Uh, everybody defensively warded the opening. They've been able to answer. Uh, since they saw four people invade on red side, they got uh, mirrored wards over on Besiktas' red side. Interestingly, Besiktas actually got deeper wards in. They've got one between the tier two and the inhib to like look for lane swap positions. 
Whereas TSM don't really show that they invaded, they just have wards all over the jungle itself to pin down exactly where Theocalys starts. Yeah, and their early warding is fantastic as well. It's not the fact that they've all gone in as a stack and sacrificed the top side of the map. They've got early warding to show exactly where Besiktas are the entire time. And Dara's doing a smart thing as well. Two saplings under the raptor camp. Bjergsen's going to toss a bouncing bomb at 155, get the three little mini raptors. He's going to start the lane halfway to level two almost. And an early lane advantage for Bjergsen. TSM don't even have to gank for him to do that. Yeah, and Dyrus is actually going to be hovering on the top side, going to head the lane instead of uh, trying to double jungle. So he's going to go ahead and soak up experience. Once again, we'll see Lucian on the top side. Looks on the, like on the minimap, he's trying to group up the minions to try and get it to push against him. But by keeping it so far out in the lane, Dyrus able to walk there and soak up experience. Yeah, and Dara's also on Maokai. I mean, he's able to range wave clear with that sapling toss, and of course, Arcane Smash not too bad at that either, especially if you're underneath the turret, so he's not going to be too worried on that champion. We'll see what TSM decide to do, whether they want to be fast pushing. It looks like they're trying to freeze. And the thing is, the texture of these lanes is so much better for Team Solomid. Dyrus is not going to be pressured by Morgana for a very long time. The lane is so close to his turret. Meanwhile, for TSM, there's so much threat of Lustful hooking from from the brush that uh, Bajikas have to double jungle with their Vladimir, and, and Thaldra's going to be held very far down early on. And that is ridiculous as well. Dyrus actually hitting level two before the duo lane, not getting zoned out of any experience there in the top lane. And the thing is for Vladimir too, in double jungling, it really sets him behind in levels, which is the most important thing. He has to get to the point where he can sustain himself in a lane. If he comes out of the double jungle, he has a hard time finding a safe lane to go anywhere. Even though he has a pool, it's still easy to take advantage of an underleveled Vladimir. Less boy here. Let's see what he's going to do. A little bit of an invade and uh, upset this double jungle. Going for some funny business. Just face checks two people. There's the knockup as well. Thaldrin not going to have any CC for this one. Santoran making his way around. Lost Boy flashes out of the way. TSM are going to be safe for now. Wow. That was very aggressive by Lost Boy. He's only got 100 health left. Chugging the potion. I guess he's not in the worst spot ever since he can chug more potions to stay alive. But, you know, a tactic we've seen TSM use before. This one not executed quite as cleanly. Good quick jungling by Besiktas gets them the red buff before they can be meddled with. Yeah, I guess the fact that Last Boy was just a little bit late, and of course the smite on the red buff giving Theophilus a lot of his health back there as well, being very important to that one, because it could have been, you know, a flay, a bit of help by the red buff might have actually helped them net themselves a kill, but not going to happen, and energy taking a bouncing bomb in the mid lane, but he's not under too much trouble, he's a loser. All right, so for the first four minutes of the game, TSM, while the gold is even, TSM got a substantial experience advantage because they basically had three lanes of experience income uh, since Darius has been up here leeching. Right now, it's gotten to the more dangerous stage, though, as Darius is fully extended, and there's a Morgana as the support. Uh, offers a lot more kill pressure. So the next couple minutes, we'll see how Darius fares because now he has a lead over Vladimir, a level lead. Uh, and if they're able to, uh, in the next few minutes, swap it back around that seven minute mark when the uh, turret defense does go down, mm -hmm. uh, TSM could have a pretty big advantage. Yeah, there's so not far, really you much... know, Darius didn't yep. get picked off yet. Well, that's the thing. I mean, we're looking at the fact that Darius hasn't been picked off, but they've still left that entire top side of the map completely dark on the side of TSM. They still don't really mind whether he gets camped. Well, that's the thing. It's always a trouble here. You could always chance for that kill. Dyrus is facing a Morgana. Dark Binding is not easy to dodge without Flash from Maokai. Side good as well. well. Yeah, if there's a minion in the range. But look, right, you can see Binds like yeah. this. Double Doge can now actually completely zone out Dyrus. TSM chooses to play aggressively. Of course, they can see Theocles. They can see Thaldrin. Nice. And this 2 on 2 is working really well. Yeah, I would have actually expected um, Double Doge to play that a little bit more aggressively when he had the brush control. Yeah. Uh, Dyrus was really hugging the river without any extra vision and still getting a lot of experience. But a lot of it is due to Theocles having to babysit this Vladimir. As I said, double jungle Vladimir underleveled. Even if he does go to that lane, it's very hard for him uh, on the bottom lane to sustain even under his turret. So he needed a little bit more babysitting. And the thing is, we're seeing TSM start playing the second half of his lane swap a lot better. Santorin's just running around jungling. He's just getting a bunch of golden experience, taking scuttlers, taking camps down. Theocalys, like, sharing XP in a duel lane is not a great use of the jungler's time. We're seeing Lustboy run around and harass the jungle. Thaldrin's getting some CS now, but now it's going to freeze out against him again. 
And consider the champions that the junglers are on as well. Sejuani loves it when you lane swap. Sejuani versus Gragas or Sejuani versus Drek'Sai, both of those, the Sejuani player is very happy to have the lane swap and have more time to just farm up. She scales much better. Uh, once she gets her level 6, we'll probably see more action from Santorin. The question is, where would that action even go? Because right now, TSM happy to play the game exactly as it is. No real turret pushes. Nice play right there. You can see Thaldrin have to, just has to respect how scary this could be. Santorin really oh. aggressive. He's basically one versus three in this jungle. Gets the camp and gets out. Yep. Confident counter jungling there without the mid lane pressure. It's the weak side of the map. He shouldn't even be allowed to do this. And he took no damage as well from the early skirmishing jungler. Hook now under Thaldrin here on the bottom side. Nice boomerang from Wild Turtle and Dumbledore. Almost getting ignored there. Gets hit by an afterthought auto attack by Wild Turtle. All right, so Besiktas finally swamps the lanes back into a two-on-two, -two, but it's a very awkward two-on-two. -two. So Dyrus, and generally speaking, I think, yeah, he's already level six. He's absorbed so much XP that he's actually out-leveled the Lucian who, 50 CS or not, hasn't bought any items yet. Dyrus is more powerful in this new one-on-one. Nardius -on -one. <laughs> recalls hiding away. Like, Dyrus is getting really massive. And you still have a really awkward two-on-two -two of a low-level Vladimir who can't really do much. Yeah, and the Maokai as well doesn't mind about being a little bit under-itemed, but he wants those levels. And the fact that Dyrus has been able to just sit in brushes in the top lane and take all the experience that he wants is huge in this. Mega Inferno Bomb, a little bit early there by Bjergsen. <laughs> Bjergsen trying to grab everything from this mid lane. He's already got a substantial CS Super lead. Super huge CS lead. TSM with over 1,000 gold lead purely from CS. And this is what we've been talking about. This is what we were trying to mention at the beginning of the Fnatic game, is the fact that this is what TSM does. They lane swap very, very well, and they get advantages just passively off the map. And actually, TSM can take an advantage right now. Because, of course, Mega Inferno Bomb reveals the area it hits. They saw how low it got Theocles. They know he has to recall. They know he just threw the top side jungle. So Theocles must be running bot side. TSM can push top heavily, taking advantage of that. Yes, uh, Santorin should capitalize because he has hit that level six point. This is should be the high impact gank. Let's see if Double Doge can pull off a miracle here. Going for it. Puddle the tick, not quite enough. All right, we do have that seven to eight minute lane swap back here for TSM. Wild Turtle's got his BF sword, gonna head up top uh, by himself, and we'll see the early roams from oh, both wow. of these supports. Lost boy, skin of his teeth, escaping that one. Bjergsen coming Ooh. through with a nice knock up there. Energy though, ignoring it just a little bit. Bouncing bomb gonna find him. Dark finding gonna land there by Dumbledore. And like ships in the night, they're gonna pass. Lost <laughs> well, boy doing a good job of warding. He knows that his team's gonna be pushing the top side out pretty soon. It's past seven minutes. BF sword on the saber. Turrets can die very fast, especially against an under leveled Vladimir. So ward for the gank paths. Make sure Rek'Sai is not gonna get up there and screw everything up. And right now, I think just enough wards that TSM could keep pressuring that side of the map. A lot of good wards on that left side. All right, well, AD carry up top. Uh, the Sheikdash go for the crab and get some vision and control around that dragon. The thing is, I don't think TSM are going to force it very anytime soon. And the Sheikdash are not really in the position to start it themselves. So unless they fully Ooh, cleared it and Rek'Sai knew there was no vision, and I don't really agree with this by Bashikash as well. They're sending their duo lane towards the top side of the map when Dragon now definitely something <laughs> that they need to be thinking about. Well, if you swap it now, then TSM... Are and that's just when the swap comes back again. So they did grab the crab before they sent him back up there, but even if you have vision of TSM taking this, the level 6 says Juani ready to roll. Dyrus is massively out-leveling Vladimir. Vladimir not even level 6 right now. Uh, TSM typically t not good dragon control early game at all. Yeah, and when it's on a silver platter, you're going to take it, right? Uh, well, yeah. they are late to get Dyrus to the top lane here, so Nardius gets a lot of damage. He has no ward control, though, because his team was never up there, so he doesn't know he's safe to knock this turret down. Then, like, he has a late recall. It's very awkward how they're playing the dragons here, but make an attempt for Dumbledore. Yeah, there's a really nice land there to get Wild Turtle in there, but Dumbledore actually manages to get the Dark Binding just in time to save his life. Wild Turtle, a little bit trigger happy on the ultimate. Well, they get a Morgana Flash instead of uh, starting up the Dragon uh, and trying to force something while Besiktas' AD carry was in base. The rotation is complete now as AD carry has gone bottom. I don't think they saw that teleport channeled. They would have to know because he got there so fast. He was just seen bottom. There's no way they don't expect that to be a TP. Dumbledore down to half again. Also flashless and not six. So he's going to be in a dangerous spot. Santorin coming around the backside. I don't think he's been seen yet. 
he's going to yeah, be close fight. for something here as the Dark Passage is going to be taken by a wild turtle, but Santorin coming around the side. Shields down. There's another boomerang. Dumbledore just so low, <laughs> misses the ult, but it doesn't matter as the Death Sentence comes through. Last boy flashes out of the way, so close to dead as Nadius manages to escape as well, but it's a free kill for TSM and probably a free turret unless the Ocalys can get something magical happening. And Energy's going to face check Bjergsen. And it's going to be a close one. Energy on a half HP. He's got to dodge the mind field away. Bjergsen tries to dodge. Glitter Lance will not do so just yet, but Energy is still happy to trade back and forth. More bouncing bomb, good juke to the right. Nothing else picked up. Lost Boy taking a lot of damage, and he's going to have to back off. Yeah, TSM there uh, taking a lot of exit damage after that dive. Uh, the Cinder Hulk drawing tower aggro as well for Santorin. Took a few hits for himself. But they did get the kill uh, with that zoning Sejuani ultimate, the cutting, off, Sejuani cutting off the exit. <laughs> they knew that he didn't have flash, remember, no flash, no black from shield. the early uh, Lust Boy confrontation at the Tribush. But again, this is TSM's lack of focus on the early dragons. Yeah. They had a they had many opportunities to take it this game, but time and time again, they do not emphasize these dragons at all, looking yeah. more for the kills, the tower dives, uh, and trying to get the gold from early turrets, but not getting either. It's very strange. They had a clean pick, they got the kill, no one had to take that much damage during the fight itself. Easy run up to the dragon. Bjergsen already had pressure in the mid lane. This guy's up 40 CS in the mid lane. That's basically free for DSM. They greed for a dive. That fails. They give up all the advantage they had from that kill. Sure, they're accruing a gold lead. TSM are winning, but it's sloppy. Yeah. We are being very critical, uh, but they definitely have a substantial lead. Yeah. And they don't have to, you know, do anything that is even remotely risky right suppose now. suppose not. If the game continues as is, it uh, looks very solid for them. And it's not only the fact that Bjergsen has a CS lead, he's taken the turret already as well. With no actual rotation by anyone, he's just naturally destroyed a turret on his own. And of course, TSM have done a very good job. The one thing I will commend them a lot for is not only their laning phase, but their ward control. They've really not allowed Theocles to make any good plays here. So if your lanes are all winning and the turrets slowly die, you're just going to keep winning the game by oh, kind of staying as is. Dash. Tries to ignore all the TSM members around him, but he's most definitely going to be... What? They're ignoring him, trying to give the kill to Wild Turtle. They'll manage to. Looking for Nadius now as well. TSM, oh, epic oh, man. Inferno Bomb for the epic overkill. <laughs> Three ults for an AD carry. Goodbye, Lucian. Botling turret. That's easy respect. to follow. That is respect right there. All right, well, that should be a dragon because the bottom <laughs> lane is gone. Uh, they don't even need any extra people to take the bottom turret. Turtle's going to stick around for the local gold while everyone takes care else takes care of the dragon. TSM will get their first of the game. The good news for Besiktas, though, is the fact that Vladimir has caught up a little bit in farm. All right, so he's getting some money. The problem is, yeah, all of TSM. So they're taking far the rest ahead. of the map, but Vladimir yeah, doing yeah. relatively not quite as bad as he could be doing. Right. And right. once again, the, the importance that I put on levels for Vladimir, levels, levels, yeah. levels. He's finally hitting the point, you know, where his transfusion is meaningful, and nobody gets caught. Yeah. You get hit by a prey seeker, or at least hit out of a prey seeker, but. Look, that was enough to save his life. They're both going to back now as well as Bjergsen going to clear out this mid lane of both minions and tunnels. It's a decent array of tunnels around the Besiktas map as well as Void Rush. He's going to be used to at least make it to his red buff. Such a dramatic sound. Yeah. They're going to get buff. <laughs> the farm alarm, you know? It's like, guys, <laughs> I really want some more gold. I guess it lets everyone know I'm full health and somewhere in my jungle, so. You know, gives TSM some knowledge of what Rexlai is normally like, full health and in their own jungle. Yep. <laughs> it also gives them knowledge uh, that there won't be any cross-map plays uh, from Besiktas in the near future. So, Wild Turtle and Les Boy up there on the top versus Vladimir. Should feel just fine. And I like this from Darius as well. I mean, he knows that he probably wants to pick up that Righteous Glory, but going to be sitting on that Spectre's Cow for a little while as well, making sure that he can lane as well as ever against the Vladimir, and he has been able to. Now it is going to be TSM rotating around, picking up the last out of turret on the map by the looks of things, but Lust Boy wants to find someone else to kill. Oh, oh my Whoa! goodness, the death sentence over the wall. Dumbledore able to get a decent dark binding, and Theocles going to tunnel his way out over the wall as well. TSM, they deserve to get something from that amazing hook. Well, they should get some ward coverage for it. Yes, That's worth vision. Saying. Beautiful. Uh, with the mid turret already down, some deep wards should come in pretty quickly here for TSM. And they're already looking to move into enemy territory. And look, Bjergsen's still here, just able to kill all minions, the turrets. He's playing PvE, League of Legends. Well, he's got the Athenes, Ziggs in the mid lane with, a bl with blue buff, constant blue buffs as well. So 
the barrage of bombs should continue. And the mid lane pressure not punished at all by uh, Rek'Sai. Not at all. TSM continue a very good set of word control and energy actually about to be flanked out by Dyrus' Maoka here. This might be a little bit risky. Flashes in. There's going to be a couple of knockups as well. Energy does have the ulti onto himself. Still going to take the Mega Inferno Bomb and a re-engage comes in Theocles in a one versus four. Maybe not where he wanted to be as Rek'Sai running away as fast as possible. Now in comes Vladimir. Thaldrin doing whatever he possibly can. Bjergsen forced away. Oh, Nardius oh, picks Nardius. up the first kill for Besiktas. Looks like mid laners you always the first well. kills. Yeah, Thaldrin is dead though. Lustboy forced to flash away. Nadia's at full health though, wants to find someone to kill Lustboy. Might be in a little bit of trouble. There's the dash forward, but Wild Turtle, he's going to tell Besiktas to get away from his support. They're going to happily move towards the top lane. Yeah, scramble there for TSM. And Besiktas actually quite happy to trade their underleveled Vladimir for a kill on the Zig. Highest level in the game, and it goes to the AD carry. So definitely happy with that trade for Besiktas. And Nadius is known as a carry for his team as well. If you get him the tools to carry in the later stages of the game, and even when they were in the finals of the IWCI, it wasn't pretty in the early stages. They managed to make this happen towards the later stage, but here's the replay. All right, so this is uh, the ants marching in one by one. <laughs> yes, I'm first focusing on energy. Then Theocles comes to try and uh, save Lulu. Takes a bunch of damage himself. And TSM basically just taking on all challengers, getting each of them very low, but only being able to finish off the Vladimir there. And as they split up, taking a bunch of tower hits, um, good kill there by Lucian on the edge, coming in from behind to flank Bjergsen. Right, we are again going to have solo laners facing off. Of course, Vladimir without a turret going to be in a little bit more danger and a massive lead for Darius, about 30 CS as the Void Rush is going to get Theocles very close to the members of TSM. Dark Finding and a Lamb, but they don't want to go against that very tanky piggy. No, and it seems like for the next two minutes, TSM can happily play to the top side of the map. This Saber giving so much time to push this top lane down. I think we'll finally neck on the top outer. They can pressure top tier two as well, force a lot of Besiktas over, and they can relocate their team to the bottom side, prep that Dragon coming in a minute and a half, and we'll see the switch focus from TSM towards that south side. Yeah, Nadius is not afraid of Wild Turtle as well, walking past the minions there, knowing that there are four members of TSM on that top side of the map. Could have been dangerous. Theocles in full vision of TSM, playing up very far as well. This could be dangerous, but they are going to lose a blue buff here. Bjergsen definitely wants to pick that one up. As, oh, that was close. The Carling trying to do some work, but it's not going to happen. Wild Turtle's going to grab that. Bjergsen wants to pick one up as well, but Sivir with a blue buff, that is an annoying thing to deal with as well. Oh, Centauran looking for the Arctic Assault. It doesn't get there. Yeah, actually, uh, if TSM wanted to go with the 4-1, the 4-1 is extremely strong uh, with Sivir and Ziggs pushing. Even if, you know, they have Vladimir with Teleport also trying to match. Oh, there's a Sivir. Nope. Great bindings, though. You're seeing why Morgana was first picked. Yeah. Well, banned away from them by SK Telecom T1. Dumbledore's definitely some good dark bindings here, but unfortunately, TSM, of course, still well in control of the map. Whoa. Yeah. There's Bouncing Bombs. Minefield doing a lot of work. All right, so the fight over the wards leading up to Dragon here for TSM. Uh, victory is theirs, and they will be able to litter the red side, so they should be able to continue on with the chain dragons for themselves. Everyone's in position, and once again, even if they do, if they go 4 1 and they have Vladimir matching up with Maokai, not only can Dyrus stop the Maokai teleport, oh or my. stop the Vladimir teleport that, if uh, he channels you, first. I yeah? need to stop you because that's a Luden's Echo. Yeah. That's beautiful. It is. We haven't, we haven't seen one yet. I'm just like, I'm super excited. MSI's first Luden's Echo, and I love this item, and it's on the team. He's going to have a lot of poke with that one. Yeah. Very but yeah, you're great. talking about, yeah, Dyrus can stop the teleports from Thaldrin. Uh, coming up. So that means now. that Dyrus will 100% be guaranteed to have the first teleport into the fight. And even if Vladimir answers the teleport, the impact of that Vladimir coming in is minimal compared to the impact of the Flash Maokai coming into the fight. The flank engage, very real for TSM. So their path to finishing out this game should be uh, fairly simple. Well, they've just taken a free second dragon here as well. Stoldren able to pull away from the twisted advance. And then his health goes right back to full because Vladimir. Yep, because just Vladimir being free. And well, still, Darius holding on to the matchup. It was interesting seeing TSM choose their lanes because Darius, as you had mentioned earlier, rushed to Spectre's Cowl after the Catalyst. And then TSM kept like finding different lane matches, trying to get Sivir to push down against the solo lane. So the magic resist of Dyrus wasn't like all that useful, but Nardius not really able to push around it very much. So uh, overall, TSM looking just fine. 6,000 gold lead for them 21 minutes in here. As you mentioned, Kobe, 
Going for three more dragons, maybe a 38-minute win could be TSM's trajectory here in this one. But I want to see if, because of all this wave clear, because they can make these quick rotations and make these Thresh Sivir sort of pick plays, I want to see if they play a more aggressive rotation-based game and just knock down these tier 2 turrets off of smart plays. And it just looks like a bit of suffocation coming through as well. This is what they're using their Ziggs for, is the fact that Bashikdash can't enter their jungle here as well because these waves are constantly being shoved in. Bashikdash need to move where TSM wants them to move, and TSM just can take everything away. It's sort of like the slow loss. Yeah. Bashikdash. They've got to make a solid move here around the map, make some, change something, because they're just slowly losing this game. Oh, that's the case. But the one, the one lane that Bishikas are actually getting a push lead in would be that Vladimir lane. Fodern is generally killing the minion wave first. Dyrus is typically respecting that. But Vlad's not a great turret killer anyway. And trying to run away from the slow burn of Maokai Sejuani is not easy either. So with the current sort of item set, you're right, there's there's no good push pressure from Bashikdas. TSM do have siege power. Yep, here's that 4-1 we were looking for. Um, you know, we have the Ziggs and the Sivir instantly clearing out waves. So much zoning power with those two as well. You can see the minefield goes down. Large chunk out of the turret. Dyrus got the top wave pushed up as well. So TSM can easily make a rotation. They have Sivir ultimate available. And Dumbledore just gets chunked out. They easily take down wow. the turret. now forced to use the pool. Lost Boy! Gets the flash for his death sentence, but that could mean the inner turret here on the top lane as well, and TSM surgically removing structures. Yeah, two people not going to be part of this fight. Thaldrin knocked well out. Morgana's still healing right here, so great rotation by TSM. Darius gets the push, he chunks out uh, the Vladimir, and there we go, two more turrets knocked down. Team still in mid, looking like a game faster than 38 minutes. Yeah, it could even be just move down to the bottom side. The thing you're warding up this Baron here as well, TSM maybe just going for the risky play. Well, it's not even that risky, right? No, I'm saying got... risky. I'm saying risky because it's a 23-minute Baron, but they've got full control of the map, so yeah, I guess risky was probably. And they have such great control over the choke points leading up to Baron that it's just it's very risky for Bashikdas to yeah. head over to that area because you know Zig oh, Sejuani. Oh, looks yeah. like they will head over though. Yeah, there's the flash into the twisted advance as well, and Theocles. Yeah, that's five members of TSM, dude. You're not gonna survive that. Uh, Dumbledore is about to face five as well. Bounce bomb hits the wall. Nardi is right in the front. Goes for the middle. Here. Tries to make the big play. Flash the way still goes down to the critical strikes. Dumbledore to the backside. Knocked down as well. Sniped, if you will. And energy also going to get dropped there. Four for zero. TSM off the back of a Baron. And Thaldron there as well, just asking where all of his mates went. They just died in the jungle. The blue buff going to fall down. Bjergsen picks that one up. Baron buff TSM. Only a Vladimir. This is very frightening, and 12,000 gold now the lead. <laughs> Dodger still having a good time, though. Vladimir with the laughs. Now, this, speaking of TSM's trajectory, uh, yeah. not only in this game, but for the rest of the group stages, um, they did have a, that surprising to some, you know, loss to Fnatic, which mm -hmm. was a very crucial opening game for them, and they took it, you know, fairly heavily, immediately retreating. Um, to the backstage to go talk that one over. This one very obviously wanting to take it very slow, standard, focus completely on object objectives, take it step by step. Um, for the rest of the group stages, and even just the rest of today, uh, they have a very formidable opponent coming up oh, yeah. uh, in which they will not be able to play the game this safe uh, because the pace of the game will be much more quick. So TSM, yes, take this win um, and recover from the uh, early loss earlier today, um, and we'll see what they come up with for the rest of the group stage here and the rest of today. Almost like a reset game or something. Good. Now we can see the TSM, of course, see. still good at playing the lane swaps. That was where their primary early lead came from. Bjergsen, of course, had a very strong 1v1 as well and got a turret for his troubles. Team Solo mid now with Baron Buff for the next minute, looking to maybe knock down some of these inhibitor turrets. As Baron times out, Dragon will respawn, so a convenient timing there. TSM to stop the siege, rush that down. That 13,000 gold each make it very hard for him to lose any fights here. Bottling is going to get pushed down. Bashika's not in position to stop them. It's going to be the turret kill, and the fight begins. Yeah, and Hibbert are falling down there as well. Centauron looking for the ult, but doesn't even really need to use it. As the Oculus takes almost all of his health. Thaldren, way in the backside of the fight, is just going to fall down. Mega Inferno bomb to oh. See you later as the inhibitor is going to be taken down next. Nadius with some decent footwork there, going to avoid some of the damage, but oh. man. Getting Arctic Assaulted, Energy gets Death Sentenced, and Lost Boy 
this Thresh, super aggression, but he's landing these skill shots. And it's going to be enough skill shots to have TSM push into the base. Still a few slivers left on this Baron buff, and that means they can push right on in to Nexus turret number two. Nardius, oh, slinks away with the skin of his teeth, but this will be GG. A 26-minute game. Bjergsen forced to still run out, but it's going to be the Nexus all the same. Team Zillamid pick up their first win of MSI 2015. Congratulations, and Bashik, that's nothing they could do in that game, and that was TSM out with something to prove in that match. Yeah, Bashik does, they do get some valuable experience against TSM in oh, a yeah. lane swap. Lane swap's one of the hardest things to get very good, high-level competitive experience in, uh, so they'll definitely keep that VOD and keep that one for research. Yeah, make sure that they can assess exactly what went wrong, but it was really surgical there by TSM. This was them just playing out their strengths, knowing exactly what they're capable of, and that was their game the entire time. Yeah, showing that they were not shaken so heavily just yeah. by one loss so far in the group stages, uh, and we'll see what they come up with later today. Yeah, they won games exactly as you expect TSM to win games. Over in North America, they are one of the best, if not the best team at lane swaps. Got a huge lead from that, a couple thousand gold, just from no kills at all, but purely outplaying the lane phase. Dyrus had one or two levels over Thaldrin. Massive Maokai was online much sooner overall in this game. Santorin actually picked a champion you're okay just farming on. The lane swap helps that as well, but Sejuani came online, got to toss in ults. All these things came together, and